Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 4.3, Solving Polynomial Inequalities. So solving a polynomial inequality is actually really similar to solving a polynomial equation. We use the same steps and then we're going to add something onto it. So there are actually three different things that we could do, uh, three different methods, and they are all good. Um, so for the first example, I'm going to show you these two. And then for the last example, I'm going to show you my favorite, which is the chart. Um, so that's my choice for methods. Um, so let's get started factoring. So first of all, we're going to define the equation, of course, is f of x equals. And so we'll find our PRR. And like I said, the more you practice this, the faster you get, and the faster you get, the better off you are. I know I've said that a lot of times, but I think it bears repeating. It's just, it's just true. So believe it. Okay, so here is all my PRR, and I can test it out. Um, I found that f of 1 is equal to 0, so that's nice and convenient. And then I'm going to use synthetic. I sometimes I just like to use synthetic because it has a smaller footprint, and um, I have to take up as much paper or screen, uh, depending on where I'm, where I'm writing. But anyways, we can just go ahead and put it together and um, find our answer. Negative 12, so that gives us a remainder of 0, which is very good. And we will write the partially factored form, x minus 1 times 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. And then we can factor this quadratic using the quadratic formula, or you could use your brain. Um, I did it already. Actually, I'm going to think about it. If you've never seen me do this method and you want to know how I do it, you can ask me. Um, and I will explain it to you in class. I think it's a little bit difficult for me to explain right here. So um, I get 2x minus 3 times x plus 4 like that. You can just double check if you get the right answer. Negative 3 plus, five, plus 8 is 5. So these are our answers and so we're going to find our zeros. So they're x equals 1, x equals 3 over 2, and x equals negative 4. So basically I just solved this polynomial and uh, now we're going to have to find the inequality solution. So here we can see that we want f of x greater than 0, or in other words, f of x should be positive. Um, and in order to do that, we can do that in two ways for now, and I'll do a third way in a little bit. We could graph, or we can use the number line. So actually we're pretty good at graphing. Hopefully you are good at graphing by now, because we've been graphing for a while. So we can look at the equation, and we know that the degree is going to be 3, and the leading coefficient is 2, so it's positive. And uh, we also know the y-intercept was, I forget what it was, so I have to go back up, 12. <coughs> So I can graph this, and then I'm going to see where it's positive and where it's negative, right? So let's put this in. We'll put negative 4 here. I'm going to put a 1 here, and 3 over 2. And of course, it's not to scale. As you know, I haven't been graphing them to scale, just making them a little convenient to read. Um, these all have order 1, and I have a positive leading coefficient with an odd degree, so it's going to start at the bottom and go upwards. So it's kind of an ugly <laughs> graph, but that's okay. We'll just graph it like that to look something like this. We'll label it f of x. So we want to know when it is positive, and you can see that when it's above the x-axis, it is positive, and when it's below, it's negative, right? Those are the y values. The y values are positive above the x-axis and negative below the, the uh, x-axis. That's just how it works. So I'm going to split this into three sections. Well, four sections, I guess. So you can see that in this section right here, the y values are all negative. In this section, they're all positive. In this section, they're negative. They go below. And then in this section, they are positive. So we can use this information to write our answer. So we want the answer to be x in and we want them positive, so we're going to be from negative 4 to 1. That's where they're positive. You could have labeled the y-intercept there, by the way. And I wanted positive and not equal to 0, so I'm going to use open bracket to 1, like this, union, and then 3 over 2 and onwards, so 3 over 2 to infinity, and that's our solution. So you can do it this way. 
we're basically just using all of the skills that we learned in chapter three and then applying them to this new this new concept so it's really not that much extra beyond what we've learned already another way we, that we can do that is to use the number line so we'll go with negative four so again we're just labeling the zeros here and three over two like this and then all you have to do is you choose a you choose a, a number that's from in negative infinity to negative 4, like 5. So I'm going to find f of negative 5. And you just find the answer. You should find that it is negative. <coughs> then you find a y value for somewhere in between negative 4 and 1. Let's say f of 0 or something like that. You should find that it is positive. I don't know the actual answers, but um, just for time's sake, I'm not going to do it. And then in between 1 and 1.5, we're going to use a number, so you could find f of 1.25. And <coughs> then a number bigger than 1.5, so for example, f of 2. And so if this is if this is negative and this is positive, then we know what sections we're going to look at, right? We want anything that's in here, and we want anything that's up here, right? and off into an FGD. So you can see that the answer is going to end up being the same. It's x in this section, negative 4 to 1, right? Union, this section, 3 over 2 to infinity. So that's how you use the number line to do it. And so it's basically just substituting in and then, you know, applying that to the, to the number line. So for our last example, we're just going to do almost exactly the same thing. You can see that I've got things on both sides now. And I'm just going to move everything over, factor, and then we're going to use our new method. So let's move it all over. Just move it so that the leading coefficient is positive. I just like to have a positive leading coefficient. It's just a little easier to factor in my opinion. Um, but if you like to do it another way, you can feel free to do it your way greater than equal to zero. So you could right away say this is positive if you like. Um, and so that we can remember that for later. And then we're going to, of course, define this. It's called g of x. And we're going to write the PRR. Plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 4, plus minus 6, plus minus 9, plus minus 12, plus minus 18, plus minus 36. Okay, so those are all the PRR. And you can test them. G of 1 um, equals, well, actually, it's not equal to 0. And you just test them all. Um, I tested them before I started recording, so I know that G of 3 is equal to 0. And I'm going to use long division this time just for, just for kicks. It does take a lot more space, but it should take me about the same amount of time. It's really, really up to you. I know I've said this a billion times. It really is up to you what you want to do. Just make sure you change the sign, and when you do something like you don't change the sign. Um, it's just the way, it's just the way it is. And then make sure you do the right thing. I was just doing, I got distracted, sorry. So, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try to focus here. So I get x squared plus 3x, so this is my next x here. Um, so, <coughs> oh, see, I keep getting distracted. That's no good. So, feel free to you know, keep looking upwards again to ma see if you're making any mistakes. You don't want to make any silly mistakes and then have to fix them later. So, and you you will know because if you if you found that the remainder should be zero and then you get something that's not zero, then you know, okay, I made a I made a boo boo. I need to go back and try again. So here I get my remainder of zero. So I know that g of x is equal to x minus 3 times x squared minus x minus 12. So now I'm going to factor this quadratic as well. It becomes x minus 4 times x plus 3. So I have three zeros, order 1 each. And uh, so we're just going to extend that. So now I'm going to do the chart for you. And the chart should look something like this. Okay, first of all, I'm going to try to get some straight lines first of all. That's the very first thing. Okay, and then we're going to be making a table. <coughs> and I'm going to put my factors and then I'm going to put my zeros here. So I'll show you in a second. Okay, so here I have 
my zeros were, and if you put them in order, negative 3, 3, and 4. So actually I don't need this line, so we're just going to get rid of it. Delete. Okay, and then we're going to write our factors. You can write them in order, but um, it doesn't really matter as long as you're thinking straight. So I'm going to put them in order. So x plus 3 matches negative 3, so I'm going to put that here. And then x minus 3 and then x minus 4. So if I multiply all of these together, then I'm going to get g of x, right? Does that make sense to you? Because we have these as the factors, and so when we multiply, we get g of x. So now I have written my zeros here, so I can t fill in the intervals here. I know that my interval from, from the end to negative 3 is negative 3 to negative, sorry, negative infinity to negative 3, then negative 3 to 3, then 3 to 4, then 4 to infinity. So that's, I'm just splitting up, splitting up the intervals there for my graph. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we're going to just think about x plus 3 in this interval. So we know that if we had x plus 3, if I just put in any number like negative 4, I'm going to get a negative number, so that's negative. x plus 3 from negative 3 to 3 is going to be positive from 3 to 4, it's positive. You can put any number in here, like 3.5, you put it in, it's going to, this number is going to be positive. If you put 5 in to here, it's going to be positive. And by the way, these are all linear factors, so that means that if, once I change the sign, it's going to stay changed the whole way through. So that's something really, really important, because then you don't, once I know what minus and then I get to the plus, then I can go plus, plus, plus the whole way through. Okay? This x minus 3, it's going to be negative up until the 0, right? Because, um, you know, if you put in negative 5, then you're going to get negative here, right? So if I put 0 in here, it's going to be negative. And then up to 3, that's when it's 0, then it changes over to plus. So plus, plus. And with the x minus 4, you can see that it's going to be minus, minus, minus until I get to the 0, and it's going to become a plus. So you can see that I have a pattern here. If I put them in order, then the first one will be minus, plus, plus, plus. The second one will be minus, minus, plus, plus. And the third one will be minus, 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 plus. And it continues on like that until it hits the zero. So this zero matches this one, so that's when it changes over. Okay? I know that's a little bit difficult to think about, but anyways, um, it's a really, really quick way to do it, and it requires very little thinking. So. I know that if I multiply these three things together, I'm going to get this. And that tells us what the uh, parity of g of x is going to be as well, because I can multiply these three things together, and that's going to equal g of x, right? So a negative times a negative times a negative is negative. So g of x is negative here. A positive times a negative times a negative is positive. So that means g of x is positive here. And positive times positive times negative is negative. Positive times positive times positive is positive. So that gives us our answers because we just wanted to know when is g of x greater than zero? When is it positive, right? So uh, that's what my answer is going to be. It does say it has to be equal to, greater than or equal to, so I'm actually going to use square brackets, and you only don't use square brackets if you have infinity. For this, in this case, and you can just copy this in. It's from this point to this point, so negative 3 to 3, and then from 4, from here, and onwards, so 4 to infinity. And you use an open bracket there because it is infinity. Put a union in between, and we'll put an x in, and that's our solution. So basically what we did today was we learned that you need a factor for an inequality, and then once you've factored, you can use any of the three methods. You can use graphing, you could use a number line, or you could use this chart in order to find the solution. Thanks for watching. Bring any questions you have to class and see you soon.